Good morning, good morning, my precious brothers and sisters. How are you guys doing? This is Pastor Sean Pinder again, coming to you with another morning prayer, bringing you in the presence of God. Amen. Teaching you the word of God, praying with you, standing with you, joining my faith with you, believing God for your miracle, for your breakthrough, for your turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. Have you guys been enjoying the series this week as we talk about finding God's perfect will? And every day we've just been really zeroing in on another topic to help you understand the different ways that God helps you understand His perfect will for your life. We're looking for your comments underneath this video as well. And on this morning, I will be talking about self will cause you to miss God's will. This is why we need to learn to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender to his will because self will cause you miss God's perfect will for your life. I've been changed. I've been changed. I've been healed. Healed. I've been set free by the blood. Free. I've been delivered, sing it with me. Delivered, I found joy, I found joy. I found his peace, sing it. Peace, I've tapped into his grace. Grace, I'm walking in God's favor and favor. I've been changed, I've been changed. I've been healed, healed. I've been set free by the blood, sing. Free. I've also been delivered, delivered. I found joy, I found joy. I've also found his peace, peace. I've tapped into his grace, sing. Grace, I'm experiencing his favor. One more time, I've been changed, I've been changed. My God, I've been healed, healed. I've been set free by the blood, free. I've been delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Delivered. I found joy. I found joy. My God, I found peace. Peace. Mighty God, you are. Grace and favor. And favor. I won't go back. Sing it with me this morning. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Since your presence came and changed me, I won't go back. See, I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Since your presence came, I'm never going back. Sing with me, church. Come on. Never going back. I'm never going back. I found his perfect will. I'm not going back on the Lord. He's teaching me too much. I'm never going back. Sing, church. Sing it. Never going back. I'm never going back. Never going back to the way it was. Listen, Father, I pray over your sons and your daughters this morning. Lord, as we go into the word of God, God, let this be a word in season to help somebody who's about to make a mistake that can destroy their lives and even their eternal soul. Rescue your people this morning from making mistakes that can destroy their lives and your perfect will for them. Lord, as we teach the word, I pray that the Holy Ghost would bring life into this word. Bring a warning, bring a rebuke, bring correction, bring instruction in love through this vessel this morning. Lord, I hide behind the cross. Let no man see Pastor Sean, but let them see Jesus only. God, I commit everyone under the sound of my voice into your hands right now. Speak to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Someone say a good amen right there. Now listen, on this morning, I'm talking about self will cause you to miss God's will. And what we are going to do is I'm going to take you into the book of Numbers chapter 22. This prophet was really backslidden. He loved money so much 
that he allowed his own selfish desires to cause him to step from out of the perfect will of God. The king of Moab was really troubled. The king of Moab, his name was Balak. And what happened is Israel on the way to the promised land, they camped out several miles from Moab. But the children of Israel had multiplied so greatly that the king of Moab was intimidated by the children of Israel. You got to realize your enemies are intimidated at your very presence. They know that God is with you. So what the king of Balak did was he sent for Balaam, who used to practice witchcraft, and God had rescued this man and called him into the prophetic ministry, but he was he was so interested in money that he backslid again. Are you listening to me and end up losing his soul? Now listen, so the king of Moab, Balak, he sent some of his officials to go and take money to Balaam the prophet so he can come and curse Israel. So the Bible says at the end of verse seven, so they went to Balaam and delivered Balak's message. The king's name is Balak. The prophet's name is Balaam. In verse eight, the Bible says, Balaam said, stay here overnight. In the morning, I will tell you whatever the Lord directs me to say. So the officials from Moab stayed there with Balaam. Now watch verse nine. That night, God came to Balaam and asked him, who are these men visiting you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent me this message. Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. He's talking about the Israelites. And they cover the face of the earth. Come and curse these people for me. Then perhaps I will be able to stand up to them and drive them from the land. Listen to verse 12. My God. But God said to Balaam, do not go with them. You are not to curse these people for they have been blessed. Now listen, when God spoke to Balaam and said, do not go with these men, you are not to curse these people, that's Israel, for they have been blessed. God right here in verse 12 is showing and revealing to Balaam his 100% perfect will. But watch how quick self can get in the way. The Bible says here in verses 13, actually, the next morning, Balaam got up and told Balak's officials, go on home. The Lord will not let me go with you. Now, this was God's perfect will. Watch this. My second point here is wanting your own way when it's not God's will is deadly. Listen to this. Verse 14. So the Moabite officials returned to King Balak and reported, Balaam is refusing to come with us. They went to Balaam and delivered this message to him. This is what Balak, son of Zippor, says. Please don't let anything stop you from coming to help me. You got to understand the devil is very persistent in trying to get you to disobey God. Verse 17, listen to what the king said. I will pay you very well and do whatever you tell me. Just come and curse these people for me. Verse 18, but Balaam responded to Balak's messengers, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. We're going to see how much this man means what he said just now, because he's a lying joker. Watch this. Let's go to verse 19. You got to be careful of some of these prophets. Listen to this. But stay here one more night, and I will see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. You see that? Now, wait a minute, Balaam. God already told you you not to go with them. He already told you you not to curse these people. But Balaam is full of his self. He wants the money so bad that this man is willing to risk disobeying God to have that money. And God already tell Balaam, you are not to go with these men. And this is people who try to twist God's arms. God already told you not to marry the man. He told you that business deal is bad. He told you not to trust those folk. But Balaam is trying to forge your hand and twist God's arms. Now watch this. This is where it gets dangerous. That night, God came to Balaam and told him, since these men have come for you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. 
Do you think God meant when he said, okay, if that's what you really want, just go on ahead with him. Do you think God wanted him to go? No, God didn't want him to go at all. But what happens now is God's turning this man over to his own will because he is so stubborn. He just wants what he wants. And you know, it. all of us have made that mistake and I ain't trying to drink from that cup no more. That's a very bitter cup and it's costly. It's a heavy price to pay when you disobey the voice of God. God told him not to go and he's still talking about, well, let me see what God say. You already know what God say. You know, people write me, uh, uh, pr pray for me. God speaking this to me. God speaking that. Look, I I'm afraid of anyone who's quick to jump up at the first voice they hear and try to run out and obey it. Man, if you don't even know your Bible, don't even come to me talking about, but, but you hear the voice of God. Let's listen. Just listen. I'm going somewhere. Let's go to Numbers 22 now, verse 21. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. This man's doing what he want to. God's, God's intensely saying, oh yeah, go. God didn't mean that. God was actually being sarcastic with him to expose that you just want to do what you want to do. I already told you not to go with him, but if that's what you want, go ahead. Have you ever had a child that just nag you and nag you and nag you and nag you and finally you said, whatever, man, just do it to get him out of your face. You know, it's not the right thing. Now watch this. This is the verse 22. But God was angry that Balaam was going. So you see, God really didn't meant it when he told him to go because in verse 22, God got angry that Balaam was gone. So God sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block Balaam's way as Balaam and two servants were riding along. Now watch this. Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. The donkey bolted off the road into a field but Balaam beat the donkey and turned it back onto the road. Even the donkey got more sense than this prophet. The donkey is trying to rescue this man from coming out of the will of God. But he wants it so bad he's willing to do anything. Listen to verse 24. Then the angel of the Lord stood at a place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. It was just too narrow now. When the donkey saw the angel in verse 25 of the Lord, the donkey tried to squeeze by and it crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam began to beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved further down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down under Balaam in a fit of rage. Balaam beat the animal again with his staff. My God, this prophet is stubborn. Jesus have mercy. Listen to verse 28. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. Now this part here blows my mind because me and you know donkey, donkeys don't talk. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak, but this is a miracle. God's allowing the donkey to talk to his knucklehead prophet. What have I done to you that deserves your beating me these three times? The donkey asked Balaam. Listen to what Balaam said to the donkey. You have made me look like a fool, Balaam shouted. If I had a sword... If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. This prophet is so rebellious. A donkey talking to the man. And he's acting like this is a regular conversation. Man, if a donkey talked to me, I broke off a running. Sure enough, in the wrong direction. I certainly get back in the will of God. Because I was running back home. But this prophet is so determined to have what he wants. The donkey is talking to the man. Having, and he's acting like this is, a, this is, this is the norm stubbornness man look God's trying to God's trying to rescue somebody this morning so Balaam said man if I had a sword I'd just hack you up listen to verse 30 but listen to the donkey now but I'm the same donkey you have ridden all your life the donkey answered have I ever done anything like this before no Balaam admitted he talking to the donkey he carrying on a conversation like this is every day wow stubbornness you can't, listen, God will try to send you all kinds of signs, but you got to obey him. Watch this. Listen to verse 31. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in his hand. Balaam bowed his head and fell face down on the ground before him. Listen to what the angel said. Why did you beat your donkey those three times? The angel of the Lord demanded. Look. I have come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. You resisting the will of God, son. 
You ought not be gone, but you're forging ahead. Listen to verse 33. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I would certainly have killed you by now and spared the donkey because the donkey had more sense than you. Listen to verse 34. Then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realize you were standing in the road to block my way. I will return home. I will return home if you are against me going. Is this man a joke or what? Now what's the next, what's the final test? But the angel of the Lord told Balaam, go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. So Balaam went on with the officials. Balaam wanted what he wanted so bad that he backslid and got involved in witchcraft. Are you listening to me? And also this man gave back into those old devils that used to possess him. And guess what? Balaam caused Israel to stumble into fornication and sin against the Lord God. And God had to command Moses to put this backslidden prophet to death. That's where rebellion and stepping out of the will of God leads. It leads to your death. It leads to your demise. I hope you guys are listening to what I'm saying to you this morning. Look, I've just got to throw one more scripture in here because I want you to see. I want you to see what the apostle Peter had to say about Balaam in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. He said, he said, you got to be careful of people like Balaam, which, which are forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Be Be Beor, Peor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb donkey speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. You got to pay attention when God's trying to rescue you. God's trying to rescue somebody this morning, but you are, you are, you are being stubborn. You know, it's not God's will, but I am telling you, if you disobey what the Holy Ghost is showing you, listen, you may, you may cause yourself to die before your time. You will experience great damage that you may never be able to recover yourself. God is talking to somebody on this morning. I pray to God for you right now. I won't go back. I pray for you right now. I pray that the Holy Ghost help you make the right decision because God is, God is speaking to you right now, my friend. You got a decision to make. What is it going to be? That's why some of you have been divorced three and four times. My God, quit blaming the other person. Something's got to be wrong with you. You doing something wrong. You leaving God out of your decision making process. And every time you hook up with someone, you are hooking up with a rascal. You are hooking up with a no good somebody. God sending people to warn you, but your mind is made up. And if you don't pay attention this time, you may end up in hell, my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching with conviction right now. You may lose your soul over this next act of rebellion against the perfect will of God for your life. You better turn back in the name of Jesus. I say you better turn back. You better turn back. God is trying to rescue you this morning. I'm preaching with love. I'm preaching with conviction because I care about you. I'm not in the business of tickling people else. I want you to make it into heaven. The Bible says it's better for you to go through life with, without an arm or a leg than to disobey God and end up in hellfire and brimstone. You got a choice to make this morning. You got a choice. You got a choice. I'm never going back to that old life. Sing it, never. Never going back. I'm never going back. Sing. Never going back to the way it was. I'm never Never going back. I'm never going back. Never going back to the way it was. Never, never going back. Rest of saints, I want to give you a chance to sow a seed into the ministry. We are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. The message of the cross is the only hope for the world. And when you sow into this ministry, when you support this ministry, you are helping us preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world. This is the hope for the nations. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when you sow into this ministry, you are helping us preach the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We have 235 nations that's following this ministry. Many souls are being saved. Lives are being changed. Sick bodies are being healed by the power of God. My God, those in bondage are being set free. The information is on the screen. And remember, partner with us. Stand with us. A partner is anybody that supports this work of God that we are involved in. Even if you give one time, you are a partner with us in the ministry. Are you listening to me? And we appreciate whatever you guys are doing. Come on and sing it with me. I'm never going back. Sing never. Sing. Never going back. I'm never going back. Never, never going back to the way. I'm never going back. Sing it. Never going back. I'm never going back. Never going back to the way. I won't go back, sing. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Since your presence came and changed me. Listen here, saints. On tomorrow morning, I will be talking about God uses visions and angels to reveal his will. You don't want to miss that broadcast. God uses visions and angels to reveal his will tune in for that broadcast on tomorrow you know me and my lovely beautiful wife pastor amy we love you guys and we appreciate you so much we really do we don't take you for granted at all we look forward for your comments underneath the videos let us know what god is doing in your life through these broadcasts my god my god and also i've got some special announcements that I want you to listen to. Listen, I will be in Freeport, Bahamas, November the 18th. I will be at Invaders for Christ Family Center. That's with Bishop Clifton and Apostle Carolyn Cooper, my mentors. The address is 61C for Bishop Drive in Freeport, Bahamas. My gosh, I'm looking forward. That's Sunday, November the 18th. I'll be there for two services. Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Sunday night at 7 p.m. I will be there Sunday morning, November the 18th at 10 a.m. and at night at 7 p.m. For more information, you can call 242-352-4787. 242-352-4787. Every time I visit the Invaders for Christ Family Center and spend time with my mentor there, I am telling you, I've experienced some of the greatest outpourings of the Holy Ghost I've ever seen in our ministry in that church right there, Invaders for Christ Family Center. If you need a healing in your body, if you need deliverance, my God, if you need direction, clarity, if you need a breakthrough, if the devil been harassing your life, if your marriage is on the verge of divorce, my friend, join me at Invaders for Christ. November the 18th, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to be there. Are you listening to me? And on that night, I'm, I'm a part of that revival. It's time to return back to God. My God, the Holy Ghost and fire is going to fall. So I'm inviting every one of you that's in Freeport, Bahamas, Nassau, Bahamas, and around the Caribbean to be a part of that meeting. You don't want to miss it. God is not going to disappoint you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm never going back. My God. And also I'm inviting you guys to go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you will not miss any of our new uploads and to make sure you don't miss 
whenever we go live on YouTube, we go live every Thursday night and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're watching us through Facebook, I'm inviting you to join our Facebook group. It's called I Believe in Miracles. I Believe in Miracles. So send us a request to join that group and we will be more than happy to let you in that group. You know me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy Pinder. We love you guys. I almost forgot something. Also, March the 8th and the 9th, I will be back in Freeport, Bahamas. That's the year 2019. March the 8th and the 9th, I will be in Freeport, Bahamas for a miracle crusade. I'm inviting all of you to be there. Bring the sick, the diseased, bring the lost, family members that you are believing God to save and deliver and set free. God spoke to me at the end of 2017. God said, son, fill your horn with oil and go to Freeport, Bahamas and conduct a miracle crusade because I'm about to save, I'm about to bring into the kingdom a new generation. I'm about to raise up a new generation. I'm about to anoint a new generation. Freeport, Grand Bahama will be touched and delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of murder will be subdued in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you guys. Take care. Looking forward to being with you. Love you. Bye-bye. I'm never going back. I'm never, never going back. I'm never going back. Never.